Good morning to you all. Um, I just want to say... I just want to say good morning to everybody, no matter where you are, no matter what time of day it is. Obviously for us here and for me now, it's 11 o'clock on Sunday morning uh, at Sedgley Community Church. But for you, you could be in your house, uh, you could be watching it at any time, you could be in your car, on your phone. Uh, And I just want to say, uh, you're watching it at exactly the right time. You're in here today because you're meant to be in here today. Whether you've been for, coming for a while or you're just new, it is not by accident that we're here today. It isn't by any coincidence. It's by the ordained grace of God that we're here, that we're listening, that we're seeing. Uh, and I just want to encourage you with that right at the beginning. You know, if you're just questioning things on your life, questioning things that are going on, as I pan round the room uh, and as I pan to the camera... We've even got people in the overflow room today. So even in the overflow room, I can't see through the walls. Uh, but you can see me, there's a cheer coming up. <laughs> and uh, I, I just want to encourage you, you're even in the right place in the overflow room. <laughs> We've got the lights off there so you can see us. Uh, so I'm just encouraging you, you today. Uh, and, and because I'm saying we're in the right place at the right time, you never know what's going on in the background, do we? We don't know what's going on, uh, uh, that God's moving, that God's changing, that God's ordaining. And uh, sometimes things just come out of the blue uh, just to encourage us. This is the third Advent. Uh, We've already got two candles lit. uh, And we're... (laughs) I'm trying... (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I'm trying not to to reminisce on when Ian took out the candle of peace last week. So I said I wouldn't mention it, so I'm not going to mention it. So we'll forget that ever happened. And let's pray that I don't destroy something now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm keeping it in order. So anyway, joy. Actually, it's all about joy, isn't it, today, uh, that candle. So why not? Let, let, let's let it overflow in us. Uh, so in Luke 2, it says the shepherds were, were obviously just in the fields. It says, now there, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news, good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. Then the shepherds were just there, weren't they? Just minding their own business and suddenly this thing happened to them. And uh, I've had a couple of those recently, you know, where we're praying for many things, aren't we? We're hoping for many things. We've got hope and we've got peace lit already. Uh, uh, and and we're, just, we're just hoping for many things and holding on. And you just don't know what God's doing in the background. I think Steve very often says he's doing far more behind our backs than he's doing in front of our faces. Um, and uh, I had a, I've had a couple of conversations recently with people that I've been praying for, some for many years, one being my dad. Uh, uh, one was somebody that we're praying for. And, uh, you know, she just rings me up one day and just tells me, that she's had an amazing conversation as she worked through the night uh, with uh, one of her colleagues, who's obviously a born-again Christian. And she said, for the first time, I really started to understand. And yet I've been praying for her and trying to, <laughs> trying to lead her to salvation and telling her and explaining everything in the Beach way. Uh, and uh, just, you know, I suppose leading her slowly. And then God suddenly sends somebody across a path in the middle of the night. And they talk for hours. So that encourages you about who you're praying for. And then my dad. Oh, of course, I prayed for my dad since I got saved at 16, which, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I prayed for him. And then suddenly he rings me up this week. My mom, my mom got promoted to glory about 14 years ago. And, um, uh, sorry, gosh, 17 years ago. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I pray for my dad all the time and uh, he rings me up he said Andy I've got some, some of your mum's stuff 
Four years. Oh, great. You, the amount of my mum's stuff he's got in his house is unbelievable. Uh, and, he, and I said, well, what you got? He said, some of this Christian literature stuff that she has, she used to get on a daily basis. Uh, I read, last time I was up here, I read from the word for the day, didn't I? I, I to cut a long story short, I realised it's the word for the day, and I remember I subscribed them to it. Uh, so it got delivered to their house. And little did I know, it's still coming to the house. And my dad says, I've been reading this stuff. He said, it, it, it's like this Bob Gack, Gack. He was trying to say his name, Bob Gass, the guy who wrote it. And, uh, and he said, he's really good. He said, at first I was really sceptical, but the way he relates things and then brings a Bible verse in the middle of it. And of course, I'm just like, yeah, that's really good, Dad. I'm, yes! Oh, my life, Lord, what are you doing? Oh, man, I can't believe. I just, yeah, Dad, but yeah, just, no. he said, do you want them? No, Dad, you keep them, you read them. Please, say, yeah, no, no, just you read them, Dad, they're, they're great, just, just, keep. no, I'll bring it. no, Dad. <laughs> so I'm, I put the phone out and I am absolutely delighted. So those two conversations for me just made me realise that we have no idea what's around the corner what the phone call, the next phone call you're going to receive. That, that, that good news that the shepherds had that day that brought great joy. We have the greatest news, not just good news. We have the greatest story in the history of the world to tell of, of God who gave up his son to be a baby, humbled himself, to learn and walk and talk and be directed by his mom and his dad and then to give up his life and walk that final journey to the cross. What an amazing, amazing story we have that he, he went there and he gave it that he could have the joy set before him, which was us. His victory, that his joy is us. When we give our lives to him, he, he just absolutely loves it. Whole of heaven celebrates. So I'd encourage you today to remember, you're not here by chance, you're not listening by chance. And that the God of joy, peace, love and hope is standing there. I'm going to do it in arms open wide. <laughs> Arms open wide, right, waiting to receive you. So I'd encourage you today as we worship, as we hear from the word, just to say, Lord of heaven, speak to me. Lord of heaven, direct me. Lord of heaven, enter into my heart and guide my life because I need you. Let's look at the candle of joy and just remember the joy set before him. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for joy. We thank you for the hope that we have in you. And Lord, we just pray, Holy Spirit, enter now. Yeah. For those of us in this room that are ill, that have, are in pain, I think of Carol there at the back who has hurt herself. Lord God, Holy Spirit, I know that you can restore our physical bodies. And for those next to Carol that her family are with her, in her bubble, Put your hands upon her and we declare healing right now in the name and the blood of Jesus. We aren't limited by our touch because Holy Spirit, you are limitless. So Holy Spirit, just enter Carol, heal her body, heal every joint, every bruise, every sinew. Be restored right now in the name of Jesus. And joy, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with joy and guide our worship, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. If you want to sit and, and kind of worship in your hearts, if you want to stand, if you want to dance, that's fine as well. But let all that is within us bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, 
I'll worship your holy name. Sing it again. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Sun comes up.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can the Lord of all glory, full of might, authority, power and splendor, come to a little town called Bethlehem? Such a mighty God that would leave all the glory of heaven and be Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Oh, little town. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sleep the silent stars go by yet in thy dark street shine ever limit himself but he was living only because of his relationship he was living in human form because of his relationship with his father and we can have that same relationship with him come to us abide with us our Lord Emmanuel God with us sing away in a manger before we have the message this morning and um, there's some 
words that you may have heard, you may not have, but they're super words. And uh, the tune you will have heard of, I think, it's not the traditional one, but uh, bear with us and, and enter into this song, Away in a Manger, No Crib for a Bed. And the final verse says this, I worship you, Jesus, for all of my days. The highest of praises be unto your name, my God and my Savior, my King and my friend. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. Sweet head, the stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the the Lord please take your seats if you haven't already thank you thank you band the worship's been great this morning hasn't it such is one of the few churches I've been to where actually we, we worship in the carols we were saying that the other morning me and Andy I was just singing oh come all you faithful the other week hallelujah just sense God's presence all over this place right now and beyond I got out of my bed this morning to deliver a word that I believe he's going to Touch many of you. Andy was right. Some of you are here, not by chance, but by design. And people are tuning in now. You've never watched us before, but God's just about to speak to you. 
I've got a word this morning. We've been looking at people in the Christmas story who by faith trusted God and what he had to say. And the title for my message this morning is this, when it feels like hell, it's really heaven. When it feels like hell, it's really heaven. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you just open your word to us? Pray that we'd have a powerful encounter with you this morning. Pray the Holy Spirit would just invade this place. Speak to us powerfully. Open eyes, touch lives, heal sick bodies. For those who are sitting in their own homes that are just desperately looking for answers right now, meet them, we pray, Lord, at the point of their need. In Jesus' name, amen. We're in Matthew's Gospel in chapter 1 and picking it up in verse 18. Now this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had mind to divorce her quietly. Life is full of its surprises, isn't it? It's not everything that we planned, life. If you've lived more than 10 years, you'll realise that it has its twists and turns and ups and downs. And what you thought was going to be right for the next five years is turned over in two minutes. And I was just thinking about Joseph. We don't often speak about him. We esteem Mary, but what a great character Joseph is in all of this. He's a carpenter. That doesn't mean to make he makes chairs and tables. I think that's what we have a, the dream of when we think about Joseph. In those days, there were wooden buildings, and so he was probably a builder. And the sort that come around your house and whistle through their teeth, and uh, making a lot of money. And uh, finds himself a lovely little girlfriend, Mary. And he's pledged to be married to her, so they're engaged. And it's a legal thing, it's more than just engagement in our culture. They were committed to each other now, to be married, and to live with each other, and to share life together. And just as it looks so good all goes so bad have you ever been there just when it looks so good it's all going so bad in, 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 in Gornal we'd say it all went pear-shaped it really did go pear-shaped she was pregnant and from the outside it was a disgrace as people saw this girl pregnant knowing that she was engaged and not married and I guess from the inside from Joseph's perspective he was heartbroken because what he thought was going to be the best day of his life when he got married to Mary, now is not going to happen at all. But Joseph said, he did, the Bible said he did not do expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. In other words, Joseph was going to fix it. He was going to sweep it under the carpet. Now, Joseph's a good bloke. We're not saying that Joseph did anything bad there. But it's amazing sometimes, isn't it, when difficult com things come into our lives. Rather than facing them head on, We've always got an escape route. Or we want to brush them under the carpet. I believe today God is speaking to some of you. And you find yourself in very, very difficult situations. You're between a rock and a hard place. And it would be so easy to find an escape route. But I believe this morning God is saying that he's going to bring you through this. And there's a day of blessing upon the other side of what you're feeling right now. And we're going to see this as we unpack this story. Because this, this is not the end of the story, it's just the very beginning. And Joseph receives a word from God in a moment. But basically in his own mind, he thinks, I can fix this. Some of you may be feeling that some of the stuff you're going through right now, I'll fix it, don't worry. I don't need God's help. I can just sort that out. If, if I can do this and that. And what we do is we manoeuvre ourselves, believing that we can sort out the difficulties of our lives. And the truth is, without Christ, we can do nothing. But after he considered this, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph had considered in his own rational mind the option of putting her away quietly and getting a divorce. But in the dream, God doesn't speak to his rational mind. He speaks to his unconscious mind. So sometimes, and I believe more times than we'd like to, to understand, is that God doesn't speak to our minds. He touches our hearts. And some of you are listening to me this morning and say, I have no idea how God is going to make me, Steve. Neither have I. But don't try and work it out with your mind. He's touching your heart right now. 
And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as that drops into your heart and you trust and believe God, he's going to change the circumstances of your life and forever. She'll give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. We saw last week, didn't we? One word from God will change everything. However difficult the situation, one word from God puts it all into perspective and changes it all. All this was took, took place was fulfilled through the, what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they would call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Joseph was part of a larger plan. And I want to say to some of you this morning, you're part of a larger plan, whether you believe that or not. We can get so tied up in our own little family, our own little world, our own little circle of friends and our own jobs, that actually we don't fully realise how much God is involving us in his wonderful plan of salvation and how much he's doing behind our back, as Andy said, than rather than in front of our face. He's got plans for us, you know. We often quote it, don't we, from the book of Jeremiah. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. God's got plans this morning. If you belong to him, he's got plans. If you don't belong to him, he's got plans to make you belong to him because he's after you. He doesn't want any to perish, the scripture says, but all to come to know him as Lord and as Saviour. What came as a shock to Joseph when he found out Mary was pregnant did not come as a shock to heaven. And I said this right at the beginning of the pandemic. This disease did not take God by surprise. He wasn't sitting on the throne thinking, what are we going to do now? Or what's my church going to do when they have to wear masks and turn up and socially distance? God had got a plan already. And we are part of a big plan that God has got. And this is not the end of days. This is just the beginning of the end of days. And I believe God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And we are going to see a move of the Holy Spirit across our world that we've dreamed to see in other generations. But God's shaking his church and bringing us to a position of knowing that he is all that we need. Maybe you're sitting there this morning and thinking, well, I don't know whether it's God I need or church I need or, or a bottle of whiskey I need. Well, listen, God is all that you need. Don't try work it out yourself. He's coming into your living room right now and he's speaking to us right here in church. And what looks like hell is going to turn out to be heaven. See, Joseph hadn't understood it, and neither do we, but God's plan has stretched beyond our lifetime as well. Do you know there are people that prayed for you before you were born? There are bowls in heaven with the prayers of the saints that have been prayed over the centuries, and God keeps those bowls there. He has eternal plans and purposes. It's nothing to do with about our 80 or 90 years that we spend on this earth. God has got huge eternal plans. And right before the foundation of the world was laid, the Bible says that Christ was crucified for us. There was a plan right from the beginning that Mary would conceive by the Holy Spirit and have Jesus. But there's also a plan before eternity began that a lovely young man with some decent morals about him who would stand with her would actually be Jesus' foster father and bring him up in those early formative years. See, to Joseph at that moment, it looked like a disaster. It seemed like all hell had broken loose. His girlfriend was pregnant. His, the lady he was committed to was having a baby, and it definitely wasn't his. And it looked like the end of the road. But I've said this to so many people. I said it to Sue when she got a blood disorder. I've said it to so many people as I've prayed with you over the years. This is not the end of the road. This is just a bend in the road. And just because you can't see the other side of what God is about to do, don't think that God is not there already. He's ready to meet you. To understand, I look around this congregation. I know many of you. I've known many of you for a lifetime. There's good friends here of mine, people I've worshipped with. All I know some of you have been through some real difficult times. I'm looking around right now. I know where you've been. But this, dear friends, is not the end of the road. It's just the bend in the road. And unfortunately right now, because of the pandemic and the lockdown and the social distancing, it's sort of brought an additional pressure to the pressures of life, hasn't it? But God's still with us, amen? And he has plans for us. He plans to prosper us and to give us a hope and an incredible future. So what looked like the end of the road is just the end, not the end of the road, just the bend in the road. Scripture goes on to say, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel, God 
with us. Aren't you glad this morning, Sergio, that God is with us? And if God is for us, then who can be against us? He's with us this morning. He's been with us since the moment that we were born. He's marked us out. The prophet Jeremiah said, before he formed me in my mother's womb, he knew me. Set me apart. Aren't you glad about that? What looked like a disaster from a natural viewpoint was not heaven-sent opportunity. Verse 24, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife. He did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to the son and they gave his name Jesus. The word that he received in a dream led to faith action. And we've been saying as we've been looking at by faith over these last few weeks and months that I've been teaching you, that actually you can't just say that you believe. Faith is more than believing. The scripture says the devil believes. But it's when we believe God and then we do something with the word that he has given us. We take a step of faith. We move out on it. Even though, like Abraham, we might not know where we're going, we make that tentative step forward and say, God, we are trusting you with our future. I want some of you in your own hearts right now to say, God, I am trusting you with our future. I'm trusting you with my family. I'm trusting you with my future job prospects, whatever they might look after furlough or whatever else you might be on. I'm telling you today, God has got you if you're part of his family. He loves us this morning. He has plans for us. But he believed. And as Joseph believed, his confusion turned into clarity. His apparent disgrace was just about to change into amazing grace. Isn't that wonderful? His scheming changed into purpose and his pain into privilege. Because the scripture said he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. However tough it is for you this morning, I just want to say, take God at his word. It's the only thing we have to build our lives on. Situations will come and go. Pain will enter our living, because it does. There's going to be good times. There's going to be dark days. But in all of this, we can trust God, and we can trust his word. On Wednesday morning, I will have the privilege, well, 1.30, of doing Gordon's funeral here. And I've got a word called, it looks like death has won. And sometimes it does. It looks like everybody that you have loved and cared about is slipping through your fingers. It looks like those that you trusted, your mum and your dad and your nan and your granddad, they're not here anymore. Those people that backed you up in your early years, you... Just some great friends, but they, they seem to have disappeared into the ether. Aren't you glad this morning we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother? And his name is Jesus. The one that said he would never leave us or forsake us. We can trust him. When all others around us we f- fall and, and, and uh, tumble, we've got God on our side. So let me just say, trust God this morning. This confused young man... In all his confusion, had an incredible part to play in this story. He was become, going to become the earthly father of God's son. Wow. I don't know whether you thought about that for a moment. He took Mary home as his wife, but he did not contribute their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he called him Jesus. It takes faith to play a part that we did not naturally ask for. Some of you are sitting here this morning and you say, I didn't ask to feel the way that I feel today. I'm totally confused and bewildered as to what God is doing. But listen, trust the fact that God is doing something. That he's not left you high and dry. That this is not the end of the road. It's just a bend in the road that you can't see around. But on the other side, he has purpose and plans and he's going to give you a great future. He didn't understand, did he? But he put his faith and obedience and trust in God. You know, when we don't understand but we trust God, he will equip us. And maybe God's calling you out. Maybe you're just feeling something of God in a new way over these last months. Now, church has been completely turned upside down. Nobody's got a job in church anymore, put a few of us, and we've been putting on these, and then you've come back to church. And all the things that we did, all the programs that we have, They've all been kind of decimated. Does that mean that God's plans 
have been decimated? Absolutely not. Does that mean that God is still not building his church? Absolutely not. He's building his church and I'll tell you something, the gates of hell will not and cannot prevail against it. So we're trusting God this morning, aren't we? We're trusting him with our lives, we're trusting him with our church. But look old Joseph, confused but taking God at his word, plays a pivotal part not only in this nativity story, but this is not the, uh, for, this is not the last time he gets this angel visit him. The angel comes again a little bit later in the story and tells him that he needs to take Jesus into Egypt because they're going to kill the babies and try and, and annihilate the Messiah. And so he plays an incredible story as the custodian of this little child and has the privilege to stand with his mother in the temple and see him debate with the scholars and blow the minds of the teachers of the law. What a great part Joseph played when it looked like it was all over, when it looked like he was going to have to have a divorce when it looked like he was going to have to push all that to one side and it was going nowhere, God had got it, hadn't he, right from the beginning. Now you might be saying, Steve, that's okay. I, I, I get all that. But clearly Joseph was in the plan of God. How about me? I find myself in pain today because I put myself there. Well, you'll be glad to know our God's the most God full of grace and truth than you'll ever meet. And sometimes we do. Not like Joseph who was... Not, not really a willing participant, but God had placed him there. But sometimes we place ourselves in hell. Sometimes we disobey. Sometimes we walk away. Sometimes we do the wrong thing. But I just want to remind you again of the scripture. And we've used it so many times recently from Romans 8 and 28, uh, 28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Some of you find yourself in a difficult position today and you're basically blaming yourself. You say, well, it was my fault anyway. Yeah, but count on this, you've got a good God. When you are faithless, he, the scripture says, remains faithful. He's working things out in your life. If you love him today, and I, I guess most of us who are gathered here today love him, and you're the called according to his purpose. That means you're prepared to take some steps of faith this morning. Well, if you're prepared to do that, he's going to make all of those things come back together for your good. You see, you, you think that your life has to go this way, this way, and this way for you to finally fulfill what God's got in it. I was thinking about that as I woke this morning and I was just praying. And the namesake of Joseph, obviously Joseph, the father of Jesus, obviously was come from Joseph... Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph. And I was thinking about Joseph as I got up this morning. Who would have thought that being thrown down a pit, becoming a servant and being put in prison would ever qualify him for being prime minister? And some of you sitting looking at the ashes of your life thinking, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. I don't know what God's doing. It looks like a total disaster. Listen, God knows what he's doing. And what we're called to this morning is to trust him and to believe him. And if you're in that place of feeling that you've put yourself in hell, then what I want you to do this morning is dust yourself off, ask for forgiveness, and ask God to begin to work in your life in a new and a fresh way. If you're in a situation, and I feel that some of you are watching me, and some of you here in the building, that you're really struggling with situations that you cannot control, that's okay. Let's turn them over to our wonderful saviour this morning. Because he's well able to cope with it all. You know, sometimes you, you hear people say, I just can't cope with any more. Well, listen, the Bible says, casting our cares upon him because he cares for you. Sometimes you've been praying for God to take the burden away and he's been saying, just cast it, I've told you. Just chuck it at me. Just throw it at me. Ask me to take it out of the way. Don't keep moaning and groaning about it, but cast your care upon me because I care for you. I believe there's a supernatural impartation of faith coming to some of you watching me on video and some of you that are watching here in the building. I believe God is speaking to you very deeply. And so I'm going to ask you to bow your heads in a word of prayer before we close our meeting this morning. The God that brought angels, the God that brought visions, the God that got Mary and Joseph into the right place at the right time, the God who is working at all of those plans is working out plans in your life as well. And don't doubt it for one moment. When we get to eternity, we will suddenly realise how wonderfully planned and marked out our existence was. 
you are not running a course of, you know, well, happy-go-lucky, maybe it will, maybe it won't. God's got plans for you. And even if you've skirted off that road and gone your own road, he's got a wonderful way of circumventing that and putting you right exactly where he wants you to be. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for our online family that are watching now. We thank you. We never thought we'd have an online family, but here they are. And uh, for you that are watching online, we pray in the name of Jesus, right where you are right now, that the presence of God will invade your space and that whatever you are worried and concerned about this morning, that you would throw that care upon Jesus because he cares for you. And what seems like hell, realise this morning, God is working together for your good and he's going to bring it to heaven. Amen. For those who are in this building that just need a touch from you. I just have a feeling there's, there's one of you, there's somebody who's struggling with a, a whole marriage situation. God says he, he's got it in hand right now. You just need to be at peace. Some of you are struggling with family members. There's a bit of pressure for some of you, even over Christmas period, to have people that you know shouldn't be there and, and you're worried and you're concerned. Just cast that care upon Jesus this morning. I'm going to ask the Prince of Peace would just invade our families. Some of you are worried about your work situation. What will happen when all this pandemic is over? Are they going to need me in that job? Is there going to be a company to go back to? Lots and lots of worries and concerns. But let me just tell you, God's got a plan for you. And we belong to a different kingdom now. We belong to Jesus. And so, Father, in your precious name, I just pray that you would release your anointing upon every one of the believers that is listening to me. And, Lord Jesus, for those that don't know you right now, I pray that you'd invade their homes as well. And that many hundreds and thousands of people will be swept into the kingdom of God because we're preaching truth. And we know when we preach truth, it sets people free in your powerful and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Um, I'll send out uh, later this, well, probably tomorrow now, uh, the Zoom details for Gordon's funeral. If you can uh, connect with us online at 1.30, that would be wonderful. Uh, well, obviously, we know we've got a small amount of people allowed in church. But pray that the technology works and that we pray tribute to Gordon. What a wonderful man of God. Um, been a local preacher since he's been 15 or 16 years old, you know. And uh, just a true preacher of the gospel. And I just want to pay him the most honour I can possibly give him and um, commend him to God's care. So if you can tune in, that would be really good. We'll let you have the details. Just pray for us and pray that God will really bless Sylve during this week. And for all those that we continue to pray for, um, looks like Lizzie will be going down to London for her operation early New Year. So will you continue to pray for Steve and Liz? So grateful for the band that have stepped up and the people that are helping. It's wonderful to get some support from other places. And uh, we just want to support Steve and the family and all that's going on there. So thank you so much again for coming this morning. You know the rules you have to leave by that door, not that door. There's a little box there for your tithes and nothings. Thank you once again for all your giving. We really appreciate that. And if you've been here this morning, there is a definitely a seat for you next week. I think we've got another few more that are coming in next week, but we've got, still got plenty of room. So if you want to come back next week, your seat is here for you. It might not be the seat you're sitting in at the moment, but there'll definitely be a seat for you. And so we'll see you next week. But we'll keep on praying and trusting God. If you can join us on the Zoom prayer meeting on Tuesday, that would be fantastic. We have a wonderful time seeking God's face together. And so I'm just going to bless you now as you go and um, have a fantastic week. And uh, may the Lord just keep us strong and understanding that he's got all of these things in the palm of his hands. So Father, I just pray right now a blessing upon the church here in Sedgley, but the community of Sedgley. May this town know this Christmas time that there is a Prince of Peace and he sits on the throne of his father David and he reigns forever and forever. I pray that you just release your people now with your blessing. Pray the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit will rest and remain with us now and for always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and God bless you all. Thank you for coming.